If you want to know more about Crossrail and what to look forward to in 2022, then make sure to check out this video. Hi everyone, it's Ugo Renze with Onyx Property Team and Keller Williams. Thanks for checking out another episode on my YouTube channel. As you know, I put out weekly videos talking about the London property market as well as living in this incredible city. In this week's video, we're going to be talking about things to look forward to in 2022 and nothing tops the list more probably than Crossrail for those of us who live here and have been hearing about Crossrail for many, many years. Um, Crossrail is an exciting railway project that was approved back in 2007 and started in 2009 and it is basically a major new transport system um, adding to the London tube overground and all the other modes of transport that London has to offer. What's exciting is really a major west-east connection and so it's going to increase capacity in the capital significantly. Um, a couple highlights uh, about the project is that it will cover 60 miles from Reading and Heathrow in the west through central London, through central tunnels, across to Shenfield and Abbey Wood in the east. It is built by Crossrail Limited. It will have 40 stations. 10 of them are brand new and 30 others are significantly upgraded. It's expected to serve over 200 million people each year and an additional 1.5 million people will be within 45 minutes of central London. So it's a major project. Crossrail, as exciting as it is, is not without a lot of controversy and a lot of delays. The first phase was supposed to open in October 2018, um, and just a few months prior to that, that it was announced that there were significant delays and cost overruns, which has pushed the project back. In terms of what this project represents, it is going to add 10% capacity to central London transport and a project has, of this magnitude has not been taken on in over 70 years in the city. So again, London being such an old city, it's incredible how much resources and effort is made to continually improve it, whether it's in the infrastructure and the transport side or even in the buildings itself. So that's again one of the things I love absolutely about living in this city. And before I continue, if this is your first time on my channel and you want to know more about living in London uh, and finding out about the property market, please make sure to subscribe because we put out weekly videos about the property market. Now, coming back to the timeline, at this point, the current timeline is that the first significant milestone will happen in the first half of 2022 when the Elizabeth Line will launch passenger service between Paddington and Abbey Wood Elizabeth Line stations. The next milestone is expected to be in autumn of 22 when services from Reading and Heathrow will operate through central London and access the new Elizabeth Line central, se central section stations to Abbey Wood. Services from Shenfield at this time will also serve the new central London stations running through to Paddington Elizabeth Line station. Now remember, these are going to be completely new stations or setups within stations. So I, I was thinking it's going to be kind of added to the, you know, the underground tube and it would just be a line that runs separately. But no, these are going to be completely new platforms and stations. The 10 new stations are Paddington, Bond Street, Totten Court Road, Farringdon, Liverpool Street, Whitechapel, Canary Wharf, Custom House, Woolwich and Abbey Wood. Each new station will have its own distinct character created by different architects which reflect the environment and the heritage of the local area. For example, the new station in Paddington will echo the design legacy of Brunel's existing building, while the new Farrington station will take inspiration from the historical local trades of blacksmiths and goldsmiths as well as the distinctive architecture of the Barbican. At platform level, design specifications include seating, signage, and full height platform screen doors will create a consistent and familiar feel to the rest of the TFL network. Trains will run every two and a half minutes at peak time through central London. State-of-the-art trains will be 200 meters long, twice as long as the tube train, and can carry up to 1,500 passengers. Walk through carriages like the London Overground, and they will have air conditioning, Wi-Fi, and 4G. 
So breaking down the uh, phases a bit more, in phase one, the trains will run from the New Elizabeth Line at Paddington and through to Abbey Wood, and route that passes through main employment hubs such as Liverpool Street and Canary Wharf. Example journey times include Paddington to Canary Wharf will take 17 minutes, Bond Street to Liverpool will take seven minutes, Woolwich to Farringdon will take 14 minutes. Phase two is the east section. This section will run from Liverpool Mainline Station to Shenfield in Essex, passing through eastern areas such as Stratford and Rumford. Example train journeys include Rumford to Liverpool Street will take 27 minutes and Stratford to Bond Street will take 15 minutes. Phase three, which is the west section, this route will be between Paddington Mainline Station splitting just after Hayes and Harlington with one branch going toward Maidenhead and Reading and the other to Heathrow Airport terminals. The example train journeys here is Tottenham Court Road to Ealing Broadway will take just 13 minutes and Paddington to Slough will take 26 minutes. Now let's talk about the housing and the impact that the Crossrail will have and where you might want to consider if you're thinking about an investment where definitely you're going to see long-term appreciation. And actually, there's been significant appreciation ever since the Crossrail was announced. Postcodes with the Crossrail station have shown increases averaging 17% higher than surroundings, with some centrally placed stations adding over 140% over the last 10 years. Hamptons International investigated projections in 2012 that prices of properties close to the Crossrail stations would rise by 25% by 2021. They found that rises in Slough, Woolwich, and Uxbridge far outstripped that at 66% on average. Heading east, one of the most significant regenerations associated with Crossrail is the Barking Riverside extension scheduled for August 2022. Part of a plan to bring almost 11,000 homes to the area, this huge development will result in jobs and significant commercial influx that can surely only continue to increase prices. The new Barking Riverside development is essentially the creation of a new borough with new homes, playing fields, eight new schools, and a Thames Clipper link. The transport links alone will have a huge draw for potential buyers. According to Evening Standard, over the past five years, key locations have been seen price growth increase of almost 50% despite Brexit and the pandemic. The most affordable option is Abbey Wood, which straddles the London boroughs of Greenwich and Bexley with average prices of a relatively modest £350,000, according to research by Savills on the prices of homes within a kilometer of the Elizabeth Line stations. And there's a decent choice of areas where you can buy an average home for less than £400,000. Most are right on the edge of London. Harold Wood and Chadwell Heath, both on the fringes of Essex and West Drayton in outer West London. The most central option is under regeneration already, which is Woolwich, which is six miles east of Canary Wharf and in Zone 4, where the average price is £383,000. The table here shows the most affordable areas impacted by the Elizabeth Line. If you're interested in areas where prices are rising, then in hopes of future potential growth, many of the best performers over the five years have been clustered in West London, actually. The league table is led by South Hall, where the launch of, cross of scores of modern, price-busting new homes has helped boost prices 48% to an average of £423,000. Leafy Ealing Broadway has also performed strongly. Prices have shot up almost 42% to an average of £882,000. A single stop away from West Ealing and you've seen price growth of 16.4% to an average of £707,000. While nearby Hanwell has seen a 20% rise to £597,000, Hayes and Harling's prices are up 36.3% to an average of £412,000. One of the areas with the highest price increases has been seen around Tottenham Court Road, which is in central London. Property prices in this W1 postcode currently average just shy of £2 million. This is a huge 140% higher than the wider borough of Camden that it sits in. Other areas where properties within one kilometer of Crossrail Station have increased significantly include West Ealing, Twyford, Manor Park, Forest Gate, Abbey Wood, and Romford. In the last 12 years, there isn't a postcode within this distance that hasn't had an average price increase of more than 200,000 pounds. 
So if you're thinking of an area to consider where it's going to have potentially significant long-term appreciation, then you might want to continue to keep your eyes on Crossrail. I know we've had a lot of conversations with investors over the years. Um, I think it lost a bit of steam when the delays were kicked in and just really became, we weren't sure when the Crossrail would start actually delivering. But as we are nearing, everything on the Crossrail website is showing that definitely going to be the year to start seeing these trains in operation. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you found it productive. If you've got any questions about where to invest, whether it's to tie yourself closer to the Crossrail stations or the Elizabeth line or other regeneration projects throughout London, there is a ton going on and we can't wait to continue to share them with you. And this is what I really specialize in, in helping talk to um, clients and investors to match up what they're trying to achieve strategically with where the opportunities are. So I'll see you in the next video and please don't forget to hit that subscribe button so we can let YouTube know that I'm putting out great content. See you soon. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure to check out my other videos on my YouTube channel where I share great tips and information about the London property market and living in this fabulous city. So that's Ugo Renze with Onyx Property Team and Keller Williams. Bye for now.